course, have breaking news. Hurricane Milton, which made landfall last night as a Category 3 storm near Siesta Key, Florida, carving a path of destruction after slamming along that state's west coast and bringing a life-threatening storm surge and flash flooding. Right now, Milton has been downgraded to a Category 1 storm with maximum sustained winds at about 85 miles per hour. The hurricane battered the state with a number of dangerous tornadoes that destroyed an estimated 125 homes. In St. Lucie County, a tornado proved deadly, killing at least two people in a mobile home retirement community. The sheriff there now says that his county is in 100% rescue mode. Extreme winds also tore down traffic lights, scattered debris across roadways, and sent a crane, as you can see here, into a building. Over three million homes and businesses are now in the dark after widespread power outages were reported. Joining us now live from Orlando is NBC News correspondent Priscilla Thompson. Priscilla, good morning. Um, could you give us the very latest as to the, the conditions there and what the latest is on the ground? Yeah, Jonathan, so let me tell you a little bit about what we're seeing here. We are still getting some wind. You can see some of these trees blowing, but at this point, the storm is more than 30 miles past us, and so we're not getting those super high winds that we saw overnight with Daytona Beach getting winds of 80 miles, 81 miles per hour. We're also seeing some water pooling, but again, it's making its way to the drain. This is nothing like what uh, folks were talking about when we were thinking about those 14 inches of rain that are Orlando was potentially going to see, but keeping in mind that the rain is still coming down and we don't yet have a sense of what it looks like around the rest of the city, I will tell you that a big issue here and really across the state of Florida is the lack of power. I'm going to walk you down to this street here and you can see a lot of these businesses here running on generator power, but you've got no street lights on this side and you've got street lights on this side. So that just gives you a sense of some of the power outages that we're dealing with here. But this was an area that worked really hard to prepare. The county passed out more than 200,000 sandbags. They have been pre-positioning pumps to get the water out if that catastrophic flash flooding did occur. And so we'll be out more today looking for some of that. But we know that that is not the case everywhere. There were parts of Tampa that saw that storm surge rushing in, potentially deadly storm surge. We're already getting in reports that there are people who have died as a result of the storm. There are also injuries. You mentioned those tornadoes that swept through overnight, um, causing a lot of damage in St. Lucie County with that mangled metal that we saw from that sheriff's structure that was just a pile of mangled metal. Uh, metal. We saw trees that were crashing into homes. And so that is some of the issues that folks are waking up to as the storm is still moving, making its way out of the state, but still a lot of issues on the ground in mm -hmm. some areas. Jonathan? Yeah, we're, seeing, we're seeing footage right now of, of one of those tornadoes. They were just massive and, and truly dangerous. Um, so, Priscilla, obviously the sun's not up yet, so it's difficult to really assess. Officials have not, you know, can't, it's difficult to know exactly how bad things were. Just give us the latest in terms of where you are now, the sort of Orlando region, obviously inland. Is there any sense of reports of injuries or deaths? Um, yeah, so we're here in Orlando. We know that um, fire and the police had to shelter in place at one point overnight, but now they are back out on the roads. We haven't seen any reports of injuries or deaths yet here. Um, and the big concern here really was the flooding. We saw Hurricane Ian in 2022 just brought devastating flooding to uh, the Orlando area. And so that is really what they have been telling people to prepare for. And we spoke to residents here yesterday who said, that they were prepared, they felt like they were going to be okay. But of course, you never really know, especially when those floodwaters start rushing in. And of course, as you mentioned, we're only in one area right now. The sun is still down, so we'll have an opportunity to get out and see if there are some of these other areas that may be harder hit. Um, but for now, real issue, the power outages and the potential that as this rain continues coming down, even as the storm is moving out, we could still see some of that devastating flooding. Jonathan? NBC News correspondent Priscilla Thompson there in Orlando. Thank you and stay safe. Let's